and everything in there. I'm with Brian Wilson of Highlander Brewing Company up in South River, Ontario. And Brian's going to take us uh, for a quick tour around his 10 hectoliter brewery. Absolutely. So we're going to start where the most important thing happens is in our malt mill room. And you'd be surprised that actually not a lot of brewers still create their own grist. So here what we do is we go through, typically we only use whole grain only in the premise there is a fresh cup of coffee, use fresh ground beans, and the same with our malt. Uh, you'd be surprised to know that actually uh, our uh, English pale ale uh, comprises of uh, four types of malt. So we use some Canadian varieties and of course keeping in style with that we actually have two varieties that are uh, imported in for us. So we'll go through our uh, malt mill here and uh, what's nice about this is that you don't have to carry our grain, it runs right through our grist auger and all the way over into the mash tun. And typically a hydration schedule will only take us about, uh, about half an hour. Do you, hide, do you hydrate as it's going through the auger? Or? Yeah, my wife actually, uh, the brewster, uh, <laughs> she actually hydrates, uh, hydrates the grain as we're coming in over into the mash tun. And of course at that point temperature is incredibly important. If you're falling under 63 degrees Celsius, you lies your grain out and start again because you're not going to get your, uh, your conversion and your pH balance is not going to be reached. So over through the grist auger, into the mash tun. We'll fill up the mass time to uh, just about uh, three to four inches of uh, below the head space and then of course we will saturate that for an hour. After an hour uh, then we'll go ahead and start transferring through a low lot valve and back into our kettle and typically we run that really really slow and using uh, water uh, from our hot liquor tank and we're sparging and ensuring that you know uh, we look at it like tea, tea bag in for a short period of time, you're not going to get much extract. Uh, the longer uh, we can do it while keeping temperature, uh, the better quality of the ale that we're producing. So then through here, in about two hours, uh, we'll fill up about uh, 13 inches below the head space here. Uh, then of course we do a gravity, and then once our gravity is reached, uh, we'll go ahead and throw in the oil. Uh, now because we use four varieties of grain, uh, we also use four varieties of hops. Uh, so. Uh, fire them in there at, uh, at different stages. So some are for bittering and some are for flavoring. Uh, and then uh, what's nice about this system is that we can actually whirlpool. So at the end of our group, we'll go ahead and crank this on to a whirlpool uh, to make sure that all our masses and proteins sit down on the bottom of the kettle. And then we'll uh, go ahead and let that rest for about 20 minutes. And then we'll start transferring. So from the kettle, uh, we'll go through our heat exchanger here. So we're at 100 degrees Celsius here. And we want to ensure that that kind of temperature of the wort drops down so at least 20 degrees Celsius, and depending on what the water temperature is, because we use the water that goes through the plant, but it's all obtained from the river. So if you get a week that it's minus, or sorry, plus 30 or plus 40, then that's going to determine your transfer time because we're using water off the main line to cool the wort. So in the winter time, it only takes me about 30 minutes. In the summer time, it can take me up to 22 hours. Uh, so uh, through the heat exchanger here, and of course then we use our hospital grade oxygen as we're going through. And then just before the man door on the fermentation vessel, and then we'll go ahead and we'll pitch our yeast. Uh, now we use uh, liquid yeast, and hence why these tanks are shaped like a conical bottom as opposed to a dish bottom. So when we crash cool these tanks, we can re-pitch that yeast because the yeast will actually propagate, it'll multiply. Uh, so I'll start out with one liter of yeast, and uh, by the end of that first pitch, I'll end up with three 20 liter buckets. And that's crash cooling. You've got glycol on these? Yes, absolutely. Okay. So we have glycol uh, refrigeration units, a three and a half ton aqua chiller. Uh, so everything is controlled off of our RTD panel over here, and we take the temperature control. So once we uh, <coughs> drop that down to zero degrees Celsius, we'll go ahead and run through our uh, plate filter pad here, and then into our aging room. So from here, uh, typically about an hour and a half max on uh, you know 10 to 11 hacks. It uh, just depends on sometimes, uh, you know, your sugar content, uh, depends on the type of grain that you're using, when it was harvested. So those are things that are always, you're having to adjust, as well as your hops. Uh, so one variety of hop one week could be 6.8%. Uh, the next shipment of hops that you come in, they're at, you know, 5.2%. So you're always having to scale up or scale down. Uh, now, so now, based on those alpha acid levels you just mentioned, you're probably talking East Colt Candy, East Kent Golding, or maybe Fuggle, or... Oh, I can't tell you that. You can't tell me that. No, actually no, I can't tell you that. We do use Goldings. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and sometimes you have to substitute because uh, East Kent sometimes, uh, you know, there's a year where there's a real shortage. Uh, so you really have to adjust that accordingly. So uh, there's 
not a huge real big difference between East Kent and U.S. buildings, uh, but for me, because I'm very intimate with it, I, I can taste those flavor notes a little bit. Um, but yes, uh, we do use East Kent. Uh, we use a Cascade. Uh, you know, uh, we'll even use some uh, World Flock or Irish Moss at the end. Mm -hmm. uh, so typically here, you got about an hour and a half uh, through a filter pad, and then into our aging room. And we don't age on a single wall tank uh, for less than 10 days. Uh, once we hit exactly 10 days aging, uh, then we'll go ahead and we'll come off our CO2 bank and we'll run through our carbonation stone. And uh, as I was mentioning before, we use what's called a ZAM and Nagel to ensure uh, it measures gas and solution. Uh, so that will determine consistency and carbonation. We used to do it just based on time, uh, but sometimes that can become very finicky. Depends on you know your amniotic temperature in the cold room, what's out here. So there's there's a lot of small little scientific things that we want to ensure that the consistency is always there. Uh, so typically it'll take me about a day and a half, maybe two days to carbonate appropriately, and then once we're done that, we'll come off the bottom of the arm here, and then into our forehead filler. This forehead filler is an HDP pre evacuation, double pre evac. Uh, and typically we can get this guy to run uh, four bottles, crowned and filled in about 23 seconds. So manually load, they go into two positions, one in the front, and then comes in out to our crown. Now, still, there's still a lot of hands on, labor intensive stuff. Our labels go on, uh, they're uh, pressure sensitive. And sometimes, logistically, being so far north, uh, you can wait up to six weeks for labels, or you can wait. Uh, <laughs> You know, four days for a bottle, so we really had to work around and ensure that the scheduling was going to meet when we needed. Right, um, and you don't you don't use the industry standard bottle. No, so we do get dinged on the environmental levy. We do have to pay on that one. Uh, but as I said, uh, LCBO wanted to see a single serve bottle, mm -hmm. uniqueness of style, and of course price point. We're not competing on price point. There's too much craft involved into it. Right. Uh, so we retail for three dollars a bottle. Uh, Four seventy three milliliter can. You'll see as high as two sixty five, two eighty five. Uh, but you know we're adding a little extra value. There. Bit of a premium, yeah. right? Absolutely. And then every bottle is uh, hand rinsed uh, with a pure set of acid uh, before we put it into our plain corrugated boxes and then out the door. And does that machine there, does it fill and cap or are you capping yeah, manually no, after it's no, filled? No, it fills in crowns. Uh -huh. um, so it'll actually do a full fill. It does fobbing at the end, of course, and then you want to see that fobbing anyways, right? Because you're protecting your inside product from the inside oxygen. Right. right? Because we have 90 day shelf life. Um, <laughs> typically, the, our beer doesn't last any more than 90 days, so we never <laughs> have to buy any uh, any stock back. Uh, but it's it's not a rock star job. You really have to love what you're doing. 